two equations, two unknowns. I can't solve the say the top equation as on its own as it stands because there's two unknowns. If I knew x, I could find y. Likewise, if I knew y in this equation, I could find x. But on its own, this equation is unsolvable. Similarly, so is the bottom equation. On its own, it's unsolvable. But it so happens that if I've got two equations involving the same unknowns, and the key for this is that whatever x and y are, it's the same in both equations. So assuming that's the case, and you'd be surprising how often simultaneous equations come into an engineering scenario where you've got two situations, two sets of results that you've done, something like that, or you can find the values of some variables as long as you've got two situations using the same variables. So what we do in a situation where we have two unknowns to find is we need two equations involving those variables and we can solve it. If I have three unknowns, I need three equations. Four unknowns, four equations, or at least four equations. So as long as I've got as many equations as there are unknowns, I can solve them algebraically or graphically. The graphical method might suggest itself to you because if I were to plot this function here, and literally I can type that in as it is, 5x minus 4y equals 12, and it will plot that graph, it's again, it's a straight line because there's no powers of x or powers of y. Then I'll get a straight line. If I plot the second function as well on the same axes, where do you think the solution will be? Yeah, it's where they cross because that's the point at which x and y are the same in both equations. The beauty of the graphical method is that it's entirely possible with two sets of equations in some sort of si situation that you're setting these up, that there is no solution. And we might look at a few examples where there are no, there, there are no solutions. So the beauty of the graphical method is, first of all, you can see straight away that there is a solution. You just look for where the lines cross. So I can solve this graphically. Go to autograph, and type in the equations. So, first equation, 5x minus 4y equals 12. Both. So, plot the first graph, and you get a straight line, as we predicted. Okay? So now plot the second graph. 3x plus 2y equals 16. So I enter equation again. And they cross. I wasn't expecting it to be an exact answer. Actually, I just made this up, so I'm very surprised. It's come out that it looks as though x equals 4 and y equals 2 on that graph. So if I were to just save this and put it into the notes. So graphically then, we find where they cross which tells us it looks like x equals 4 and y equals 2. The point has been made that if I have three unknowns and three simultaneous equations, then the graphical method, unless you had access to software that allows you to plot in three dimensions, you wouldn't be able to use this graphical method. You'd have to use the algebraic method. As far as the assignments are concerned, the Unit 28 assignment then that does require you to um, plot graphically, okay? But the Unit 4 assignment asks you to solve these things algebraically. So we've now solved graphically. You also need to be able to solve algebraically because, as we said, sometimes you have to do it algebraically. And there's two ways we're going to look at. One is by elimination, one is by substitution. And there's a good chance you'd have seen these methods before because it's a fairly common topic at GCSE.
The idea of the elimination is to eliminate one of the variables. So what we do is we label the equations 1 and 2 to make the assumption that x and y are the same, whatever they are in both equations, both equations. And then we look at the equations and we try and make the x's or the y's the same. If I look at this second equation here, Is it? Okay. Right. Thank you. So, if we look at the second equation here, the 2y in here, if I multiply 2y by 2, I'd have 4y, which would be the same number of y's in here. So, I can make y's the same in both equations. If I wanted to make the x the same in both of these equations, I'd have to look for a common multiple, a number that 3 and 5 both go into, which would be 15. So I'd multiply this by 5 to get 15x, and the 5x by 3 to get 15x. But in this case, I can actually quite quickly make y's the same in both by multiplying number 1 by 2. So the shorthand way to do this would be to say, um, equation 2 multiplied by 2. I'm going to take the second equation and multiply it by 2. If I multiply by 2, every term on both sides of the equation must be multiplied by 2. So 6x plus 4y equals 32. Not in the second equation, no. In the top equation, it's a negative sign, but not the bottom one. I'm multiplying. No, I'm just trying to make the y's the same. And then we're going to then we have to take into account that one is positive, one is negative when we eliminate, Cameron. But at this point, all I'm doing is making the y's the same in both equations, which I've managed to do. Good point that one is positive and one is negative, and that has had implications when we eliminate. So Let's call that 3, equation 3. Now we look at them, and we're going to either add or subtract these two equations from each other. These equations, 1 and 3, are the keys now. And I'm going to either add equation 1 to equation 3, or I'm going to subtract equation 1 from equation 3, or the other way around, to get rid of the y's, because they're the same. So now at this point, Cameron, because they are one's positive and one's negative, I'd add them. So I go one equation one plus equation three. And if you think about it, if I add them, I'm going to have minus four y plus four y, which is zero. Five x plus six x is eleven x, so I'm left with eleven x equals 12 plus 32, which is 44. So I've got 11x equals 44. And suddenly I've eliminated one of the variables, and I can solve it. I can find x. Divide both sides elev by 11. x equals 4. And I've found one of the values. Now we've got one of the values, x in this case, we can then go back and substitute that value of x into one of the equations, either this one or this one. It doesn't matter. Choose the easiest one. So equation number one, I now know that x equals 4, so I can put that value of x back into this equation. So we say we substitute into 1. And we say that, so we rewrite equation number 1, 5x minus 4y equals 12. So now, 5 times 3, whoops, 4, isn't it? 5 times 4, minus 4y equals 12. So now we can solve, because 5 times 4 is 20. And 
now we can find y. At this point, do you remember what the little tip we were talking about? If the thing we're trying to isolate is negative, what's the good idea to do with that, first of all? Add it to both sides, yeah. So I've got 20 equals 12 plus 4y. That makes the y positive, which is a good idea. So now we can subtract 12 from both sides, and I get 4y. So, yeah, 4y equals... What's that? And y equals four, 8 over 4, which is 2. So we've got x equals and y equals 2, which is what we had with the graphical method. So to check the values are right, our x and y, put them back into the second of the original equations, the one we didn't use, and put in substitute your value for x and y and see if you get 16. So check in 2. So equation 2 says 3x plus 2y equals 16. So now we've got that 3 times 4 plus 2 times 2 should equal 16, which it does. So I know that I'm right. There is another method, which is the substitution method. So I just want to have a look at this now as the last method. And then I'll point you to some exercises in the textbook and you can have a go at a few for yourself.